What an interesting stay we had and also the drive through we had in Springbok was quite nice. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we'll see Springbok some other time again. We've just left our accommodation which is just outside of Springbok and we got onto the N7 and headed for Okip and if you have a look at our map you'll see that it's a very long distance it's about 17 kilometers to get there <laughs> and uh, we heard so much about the place and we were really inquisitive to see what it was like I've heard of Okip so many times. Yeah. Look at that interesting shape of those mountains. Yes. The mountains, the hills are very interesting looking here. Yeah, they are. A lot of these people must probably work in Springbok. Oh yeah, it's so close. They are. She's having car trouble. Yeah, oh, shame. Projects, upgrading of Okip Sports Grounds. Okay. So I actually didn't need to go in and fill up in Springbok. I could have come to Okip. They got a Caltex here. They're surprising you. Yeah. As we came driving down this road, we immediately knew this structure was old and we had to turn in here. Yes, we didn't know it at the time, but it turned out to be a ventilation shaft installed by the Cape Copper Company in 1880. So we absolutely had to check it out. Well, when we stopped here, I had to take a walk to this structure. It just looked old to me. And I wanted to try and figure out what it was for, but I just couldn't find out anything about it or recognize anything. And uh, I think it must have had something to do with the copper mines that were operating here. What we did manage to find out, and that was very interesting to us, was that uh, Okip is the oldest mining town in South Africa, and copper was already discovered in 1855 when they started to mine it as well. Production ceased in 1918, and until then, it was the world's richest copper mine. That blew my mind, and the height of production was in the 1870s. The sign next to the road indicates that this is a smokestack and the research we did online calls it a ventilation shaft so I presume it's one and the same thing. And as we've mentioned before it was built in 1880. I must say this thing is in amazing condition for being 140 years old. That's incredible.
I'm sure this must have been a sundial right here. When we were driving up to this building, we knew it had to have an interesting story. So when we were back home, we did some research and we found out it was a Cornish engine house with a Cornish beam pump, which you can see on the side here. Is a little bit of information which I won't be able to say off the cuff. So I'm going to read a short piece here, which is very interesting. The first records of the Okip mine are dated 1856, when a shaft with a splendid show of copper is mentioned, and by the end of that year, the shaft was 12 meters deep. In 1864, a small engine was erected, which operated the pumps and roll crushers, and later a WIM engine was installed. In the 1860s, Okip became the most important mine of the Cape Copper Company. By 1873, the mine was 116 meters deep and large quantities of water had been encountered. A breakdown of the pump caused the lower levels to flood, thereby disrupting the operations. This mishap prompted the directors to purchase a 30-inch Cornish pump. By 1882, the mine was at a depth of 208 meters and the 30-inch Cornish pump was proving insufficient to handle the water. A second 50-inch Cornish pump was therefore obtained, designed by John Hocking and built by Harveys of Hale. As far as it is known, the pump is the only complete Cornish pump remaining in the Southern Hemisphere. Okip Hotel and they are so nice and friendly inside you. Take a walk through.
This is the drill that they used to work with air. Look at the size of this thing. And yes, another cute mine trolley. Take all the copper ore out of the ground with. Oh, this is so nice to come to a place like this and they allow you in. I've got a nice little hotel here, let me tell you. I think they have a nice little town here. That's crazy. We've heard of it so many times but never knew what it was. Eh? And so rich in history, eh? yeah. mining history. It's incredible. So that road goes out of town now. Okay. I just want to see what that building is. This goes to Concordia and Good House. Okay. Don't know those names. These look fairly old houses too. Yeah. find it interesting when we see infrastructure being upgraded in these small towns and this was a board that indicated that the substation was being upgraded. How did you know I want to go down this street? Oh, don't I know you. Neat 
grounds, eh? Yeah. Just walking down the street. Look how shiny he is. Yeah. When we came into Okip down the main road, we noticed this college and we decided to come back to it later and uh, see what the campus was about. And we later found out that it was the Northern Cape Rural Technical Vocational Education and Training College and it's a big place. We were lucky enough to run into the campus manager, Mr. David Boyce, and he chatted to us for a little bit. And he explained that the college consists of two sections, uh, the business studies side and the engineering side. And the business studies already goes up to national diploma and they were expecting an accreditation visit for their engineering workshops just a week or two after we were there to hopefully also be able to go up to I think what he said was blue level or something like that, but I can't remember and we lost the clip, but that would be an equivalent of a national diploma. We thought that was awesome. Yeah. He also explained the college was started in 1981 to upskill the miners who had lost their jobs because of the mines closing down. And in the 90s, it was expanded to include the business section. So the engineering section was there first. And it's a big place for a small town yeah, like is. this. It's huge. Now on a lighter note, uh, Mr. Boyce told us a story of an Australian mining company that came to the area and sent up a drone to prospect. And uh, he says this was in COVID times, 2020. And he was brying the one Sunday afternoon and he saw this massive drone coming over while he was brying there and he thought that the government has sent out this drone now to start sanitizing the whole of our kip. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. Yeah. Hey, look at the sports ground. Oh. Cricket pitch. Wow, that's cool. Look at the grass. 
us on the rugby field. This is great to see. Yes. Hi. And I've got a cricket pitch. Okay, I'm not going to drive on because this is no. a functional pitch. So, look at that. might be your Catholic church. You think? Yep. Is there anything that makes you say it? No. Just the look. It looks Catholic. This town was really very interesting to visit, especially the history associated with the copper mining. Yeah, I'm really happy that we finally got to see what Oakib looks like. 